In a broad valley near the foothills of the Australian Alps stands Canberra, Australia's national capital. Seat of federal administration, it lies in national territory, less than an hour by air from Sydney, just over an hour from Melbourne. Tourists coming from all parts of the continent find a city different from any other in the Commonwealth, and yet genuinely Australian in its easy freedom, its sense of responsibility, its rapid growth. Any new arrival wants to know the same things. What is there to see? What kind of place is it? Naturally, first on the list is Parliament House, gracefully framed by trees. Trees and parkland surround the nearby administrative buildings. Many federal departments have their headquarters in Canberra already. More are transferring. Designed to accommodate some 3,000 offices of these incoming departments is the massive administration building. It stands near Parliament House on the south side of the drowsy Malonglo River which flows through the city. All three services are represented in Canberra. The Naval Wireless Station, HMAS Harmon, in conjunction with Bell Conan, has been in operation since 1939. The RAAF base at Fairburn is also the civil airport, the only one in the country under Air Force control. At the Royal Military College Duntroon, young officers of the Australian Army received their four-year course combining academic and practical training. The fighting men of the past are honored in the National War Memorial with its proud record of the accomplishment and sacrifice of Australian servicemen. Representing the many faiths of Australians are the churches of Canberra. Their spires standing firm against the tawny hills of the Australian uplands. The newcomer finds every view enhanced by Canberra's superb blossom. This is no accident, but something that breathes glowing life into the city's great overall plan. At the government nurseries, trained staff cultivate blossoms from all parts of the world. For every shrub that graces a Canberra Boulevard, one grows in a private garden. For many years, the government parks authorities have encouraged this trend by issuing every autumn many thousands of shrubs and trees free to home gardeners. But Canberra is much more than a collection of fine public buildings and beautiful parks. It is the home of about 40,000 Australians, the fastest growing city in the country. Since 1945, Canberra has trebled its population. From being a little over half the size of neighboring Goulburn, it is now nearly twice as big. This growth will not slacken in the near future, for Canberra's population is expected to reach 60,000 by 1970. Even years ago, when Canberra's population was only a handful, the pattern of its progress was already laid down. 
Instead of the uneconomic, unplanned sprawl which characterizes many growing cities, Canberra copes handsomely with its rapid development. Especially striking are its blocks of flats, only a minute or two from the main shopping centre. Inside, the flats are modern and comfortable. In flats or in private homes, Canberra has a higher standard of housing than any other part of Australia. Many people own their own homes, others pay modest rents. In these surroundings, the pace and complexity of city life give way to a relaxed but stimulating tempo, with an emphasis on social life and home entertainment. There's time and the right atmosphere for a leisurely drink, perhaps in one of the many clubs which offer traditional Australian informality. A typical example is the sergeant's mess at Duntroon. Young single people and other new arrivals find accommodation in government hostels. In the privacy of their own rooms, guests catch up on correspondence. Get ready for the weekend sports. or follow any one of their many interests. Those who enjoy live theatre go to the Canberra Repertory Society, a theatre belonging to the community, for many residents take part in this amateur company which, guided by its professional producer, plays every Friday and Saturday night throughout the year. Even the working day has its special advantages in this planned city. With homes and hostels so close, many people go home for lunch. Some in their cars, Canberra has few parking or traffic problems, some on bicycles or by bus. Canberra mothers appreciate the bus services which take their young children safely to and from school. In fact, in this modern-minded city, education can be an adventure for the very young. The children have good educational opportunities from preschool to university level. In common with the rest of Australia, schooling is free and compulsory between the ages of 6 and 15. An active school building program has ensured that facilities have kept pace with a rising population. The private schools play their valuable part in the system. Canberra University College offers courses leading to degrees in arts, law and commerce. The development of the postgraduate Australian National University is one of Canberra's most significant achievements. In its national capital, Australia is able to provide opportunities for research into several fields and has succeeded in attracting many scholars of world distinction. Amongst the capital's research units is the graceful Institute of Anatomy. The National University's Research School of Physical Sciences is delving into the potential of the atomic era.
In this city, the conception of planning is carried through to the domestic level with some distinctive shopping centres in suburban areas. Picture theatres too are close to home and they screen releases simultaneously with Sydney and Melbourne theatres. Two modern shopping centres, Manica and Kingston, are on the south side of the Malonglo River. Housewives may shop in a leisurely way without rush and without crowds. There are generous shopping hours and a large variety of goods. The main shopping area, indeed the heart of the city, lies north of the Malonglo. Civic Centre is destined to be the commercial and civic headquarters of Canberra. The city's planners have answered the demand for more facilities by effecting a transformation at Civic Centre in recent times. Scores of new department stores, chain stores, fashion salons, restaurants, grocery shops and other stores have emerged. And this rapid progress has been encouraged by the appearance of many firms well known in other Australian cities. Several women's style salons have opened in fashion-conscious Canberra. But in some ways, dress is more relaxed in Canberra than in other capitals. With sunshine encouraging outdoor activity, gardening and hiking, many Canberra girls concentrate on simple skirt and sweater outfits when assembling a wardrobe. Perhaps Australian cities will look back to the late 1950s as the era of the espresso coffee bar. And in Canberra, these and indeed all eating places have shown remarkable variety and standard in recent years. Much of the credit going to new Australians. A big tourist traffic means that Canberra has many pleasant and comfortable hotels. Local residents also relax in them, or drive for a meal to the out-of-town motel. Sooner or later, new arrivals make for the tourist bureau. At any season of the year, there's plenty to be seen, either in Canberra itself or nearby. Every weekend in winter and spring, many parties of Canberra people travel 40 miles or so to fine, safe ski runs on the snow slopes of Mount Kosciuszko or the adjacent Brindabella Rangers. Back in the city itself, there's a sports area within three minutes of every house. With its crisp freshness and high percentage of sunshine, Canberra is ideal for sport. And the variety of games followed reflects the mingling of people from all parts of the country and from overseas. As spectators and as participants, Canberra men and women find sport of all kinds, from trout fishing in the famed Murrumbidgee to swimming in the superb Olympic pool.
And so the newcomer has only to look about him to find these questions answered. What is there to see? A city of beauty with its superb surroundings and the buildings of men standing as records of living history. What kind of place is it to live in? A spacious city, relaxed yet purposeful, where there is room and time for life to be enjoyed. In its graceful setting, Canberra uniquely sums up the character of Australians and Australia. A modern city grows and prospers amid the plains and hills of the world's oldest continent. This is truly the nation's capital.